This episode of Film Riot is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Riot, we're prepping for a new shoot. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes a mystery out of the effects and techniques. Go to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. And next week, I'm going to be in production for two days on a quick new short film that we're doing, which means this week, it's all about the prep. All now about, that, about that prep. About that prep. Really? It's topical. Now, this short film is much smaller, a lot more contained, around four pages long. So the type of prep I'm going to do on something of this scale is pretty minimal, but very important to make sure everything goes smoothly. So today, we talk about all that goodness. <laughs> At this point, the script is already finished, and as we talked about before at the beginning, before you even write the script, the hardest part there is the idea, trying to figure out what that thing is that you wanna spend all your time on next. For me, it's about letting something spark an interest in my mind then working the rest around that one nugget of an idea. But Mo nugget. Yeah, well, more often than not, I'm actually stealing from myself with other ideas that I had that I never fully developed, just cherry picking from things that I came up with before that would work for this new idea. Once I get the idea, I create the outline in my head since this is a very short film. For me, if it's under 15 minutes, I don't write an outline usually. I just think out the whole story in my head then start writing which I did using Fade In. You can find Fade In software right here. This has been my favorite software to write in by far for the past year and a half, I'd say. It's incredibly simple and clean looking, which I love. Shouldn't matter, but it does. Software that looks all corporate just messes with my head while I'm trying to write. Don't judge me. Once I have my script done, I'm gonna break down everything that I'm gonna need for this short. I start this by going through the script with a handful of highlighters, like yellow, pink, blue, and green. As I read through, I'm gonna highlight everything prop or set related yellow, everything wardrobe or makeup pink, all lighting and camera needs will be blue, and visual effects are gonna be green. Of course, you can use whatever colors you want and assign those colors to whatever meaning you want to. The point here is to single out all those needs so that you can see them quickly. On a larger shoot, your AD would be doing the breakdown and each department head would be handling their own as well but for smaller shoots we have to wear many hats and make sure everything is getting done. Now that I have it all highlighted, I'll go through and make detailed lists of what I'll be needing for each of those things. In my script there's a candy bar, so do I want to use a generic bar or do I want to make a custom wrapper? And I'll note that down. For camera and lighting, I make note of anything that will take something special to accomplish what I wrote, like fog, fans, or lights that I don't already own. And it will go like this for all of the categories, which this basically becomes my shopping list of things that I'm gonna need to get, or people that I need to get involved, like visual effects artists, special effects artists, and so on. Next, I pull together my reference board and playlist to send off to any collaborators that might need it. In this case, that's Ryan Booth, who's gonna be acting as DP on this shoot for me. I sent him this with the script so that he can get a solid idea of the tone of the piece. For this one, it was a lot of close encounters of the third kind stuff. And I like to use Evernote for my board, since I can drop all my images in, put them in the order that I want, add in any notes that may help, then send them a link to that specific note, which they can pull up in any browser. It's super helpful. Next, I'll do my shot list, which I start on Evernote as well. I'll listen to my playlist that I created and play the film in my mind, writing down all those shots that I see that I need to edit together how I'm seeing it play out. After that, I'll take another pass at this and try to trim it down to only the shots that I know I'll use, cutting down as much fat as possible, since I know if I don't do it now, I'm gonna have to do it on set when the stress is high, since this is gonna be a very tight schedule. Finally, I would do my storyboards if I was doing them, which for this project, I'm not. It's a smaller piece, which I don't feel needs it, so I'll skip it this time around. However, if I were to do it, there are two apps that you could use. First, it's Frameforge. It's a bit pricey, but worth it for the amount of flexibility that you get. Second is a new iPad app that I've been trying out lately, and so far, seems pretty cool. It's called Shot Pro, which is like the little brother iPad version to Frameforge in a lot of ways, and it's under 30 bucks, so definitely check that out right here. Of course, there is location as well. For this, we just Googled. We wanted a cabin type location, so we Googled for that sort of thing in our area and started contacting people. After a bunch of no's, we finally landed on a yes for a solid location. But that's it for the basic paper version of the prep. Now a quick break and we prep our gear. If you need a website to put yourself upon the internets for people to see you, your face, your work, whatever it is that you do, you should go to domain.com. They got hosting you put plans. Your body in it. What? You put your body in it. In domain.com? In domain.com. They got hosting What's plans. They got hosting plans that are reliable and affordable. They got the domain discovery system to help you pick the right name for you. And we use keep them. Um, yeah, Josh. You got a snoop snoop? <laughs> I don't know. Do you what, have a snoop snoop to put in your box? I don't know what that is, but it put sounds. Put your body in it. <laughs> if, 
<laughs> if you use the coupon code Film Riot and check out your 15% off your domain names, web hosting, we think domain names, thinkdomain.com. Put your body in a snoop snoop. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Logo. Moving into gear, first thing I do is lay everything out that I'll be taking to test it out, make sure everything is working right, turn on every light, check every cable, test the audio, and so on. I've got my LOL kit, which I talked about in this episode here, a bunch of can lights and assorted bulbs, which I take on everything, my DIY dimmers, and recently I've been using these impact dimmers. Super cheap for a dimmer, though not as durable or as flexible as some more pricey dimmers. But if you are on a budget, these work really great. I have four 1K rated and I have two 600 watt rated, which is an impact, but basically the same thing. The 1K rated dimmers are going for about 43 bucks and the 600 watt dimmers are just $22. I got the 600 watts because they're much cheaper and I can use them on practicals or my can lights. You can find them both in the links in the notes section below. Moving on to my grip bag, must haves in there are C47s, which are just clothes pins, pony clamps, I get all mine from Home Depot. They're the same thing as what you get from a film site, but usually you can find them there a lot cheaper. Another clamp that I love is this bad boy right here, the gaffer clamp, incredibly useful and versatile, especially when mounting small lights like a 250 or can lights. Then I have some gaff tape which is the workhorse in my gig bag. I use it for everything. I have my assorted tapes around a bungee so one of my crew members can just wear it on their belt and have it at the ready. And of course extension cords for days and some power strips, triple taps, and so on. Then I have my flag kit. This one is from Digital Juice. Really solid kit that is a lot cheaper than the alternatives, but so far, just as good. You have a few nets, a silk, some solids, which is extremely helpful for shaping the light the way you need it. For diffusion, I have my pop-out panels that I've shown you guys before, and one that I use the most often, a shower curtain. I just love this thing. It looks so good. It is a frosted shower curtain. It's like nine bucks on Amazon. Then I have my C-stands, glorious stands of mounting anythingness, and the newest purchase that I'm way too excited about two four bank kinos which is possibly my favorite light I freaking love the look that you get from these beauties it's called the four bank because you have four lights in there which you can control individually on the ballast of the light click one light on at a time to select the intensity that you want you can also mix color temps with the bulbs and here I have half tungsten and half daylight so I can switch between daylight and tungsten quickly I'm cutting down on my light output but it's a great way to mess with the color temp on your fixtures and finally this guy my Leatherman which will be on my hip the entire Entire shoot my Swiss Army knife of filmmakers you could pick one up at Home Depot or any other hardware store for cheap enough and it's often the only tool that you're gonna need on set so so good it's so so good and that's my prep for the coming shoot nothing too crazy just a lot of checklist items including making sure you feed your cast and crew which should go without saying if you have any questions you can hit me up on the Twitters right here I'm sure I'll be posting about our new project while we shoot it there and some pictures on Instagram too so you could follow that right here and I'll see you guys next week when I beat my foe through dance off <laughs> <laughs>